Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go through the Igbo concept of Ogu, Nanso Ogu. Understanding the reasons why in our cosmology, in our culture, in our tradition, there are laid down principles and moralities and laws that are guiding the usage of Ogu that makes it possible for you to use it or not to use it. Now, this particular video was inspired by uh, a misinformation I came across on a live stream. Now, the Dibia was more or less trying to advertise his um, Ogwa Wele, what they use it for. They say it is a wealth um, attraction charm. You use it and you gain favor from people, You all those nonsense. Now, he now went ahead to say that that particular charm does not have any unsaw. And when I was scrolling to, because I didn't really want to pay attention to the live stream, I was kind of in between, but that's kind of grabbed my attention. And I'm like, is there any charm in our cosmology, our custom, that does not have one sort of unsaw? Or the other. Now he also even made mention of because he was trying to overhype that particular charm because he wants people to buy them and he was dishing out so many wrong information. And fortunately, people that were listening to him were buying into that ideology. And it is a shame. So this is why I decided to make a video and also write an article that I published on my blog on this particular topic. Ogo, na unso ogo. Why do we even have, why does an ogo has an unso? Why does it happen in our custom, in our tradition? Now, ogo, of course, you can call it charm or medicine. And on so good, these two terms are closely intertwined and associated with one another. This means that you cannot talk about on ogo without talking about the accompanying on so. If you go to a Dibia and a Dibia prescribes an, an ogo for you, it is also going to tell you in a pife ogwana. So this is what you should do for this ogo. This is what you should not do for this ogo. This is a taboo that is associated with this ogo. And you're not expected to, you know, defile such taboo. Now, if you want to bring this concept of organ to modern medicines, when you go to the hospital and the doctor prescribes a drug for you, the doctor will also tell you what you're supposed to eat and what you're not supposed to eat, depending on the illness. They could also tell you that if you want to drink this drug, I should take this drug in this particular time of the day, Maybe take it once, uh, one once afternoon night, or take it only at night, or take it with water. Don't you know? Take it with alcohol. Don't take it. So there is some sort of a law or a guiding principle that is attached to ogu. When we now talk about it, we are talking making reference to ogu in form of something mythical or making make reference to ogu in terms of modern medicine. But the truth here is that ogu has an established principle that guides it. Now, personally, I define ogu as an alchemical configuration that is used to express an intent now the intent could reach from intent to heal maybe you're a dibia you will see that the intent of you or the dibia configuring the roots in the herb it's because they want those roots and herbs to heal you now we could have the intent to acquire to acquire things it could be to acquire success it could be to acquire financial freedom but the ogwo performs that function. It use, you use that ogwo as a way to express that intent in regards to acquiring 
financial liberations. Now, it could be intent to protect. It could be intent to fight wrongdoings. It could even be intent to manipulate or to entertain through the creation of illusions. We call it ifage, the infliction of psychic dizziness. This particular expression of intent of ifage, it is more popular when we go for masquerade activities. For instance, in my community, Newi, every August we have this festival, Iriji, Ibuafiolo. Now, during this event, we have masquerades, different kinds of masquerades that are coming out to perform. Now, each, some of these masquerades, they are coming with some sort of charm or go that they are going to use to perform and to entertain. Now, before you know it, they will start doing what we call emaakogo. They are trying to know who is more superior or whose charms is more superior or whose protective, you know, guide or whatever is more is more superior to each other. Now they start doing ifajo and different kinds of amanse that is dedicated at trying to prove a point. Now to us, the onlooker, it is entertaining. When we see them doing all these kinds of things. Now, when the, in, the usage of ogwo falls under the intent to manipulate, to manipulate another person, it could be to make somebody to, you know, to do what they don't want to do, to kill or to basically to just do something that it is um, socially unacceptable. But ogwo falls into the category that makes it your, you use it to express your intent and whatever you want to use it to achieve, whether it is good or it is bad. This is why the definition or the various aspects of ogwo is determined by its intent. If the intent of the ogwo for you is to use it to protect and to promote your life, then it is ogwo. It is a good one. It has a positive impact in your life. But if the usage of that ogwo is malignant, it turns into what we will refer to ajo ogwo, a bad spell or a bad charm. So the the Various aspects of ogwo is dependent on the intent of that ogwo. Now, I'm of the opinion that ogwo on its own, it is just an, a configuration. It is not good or it is, and it is not bad. But what creates this variance, this, dif this difference within it is the expression of intent. Me personally, if I decide to do any kind of ogwo, the ogwo is going to be targeted at me using it to protect and to promote my life. Another person could decide to do the ogwo and would now decide to use the ogwo for malignant purposes. Now, we also have a third category. We also have a third category, which is ogwiki. This is where this kind of wealth acquisition charms, they fall under, or charms that can, you know, this ifadro kind of charms. It falls under that category. The intent there, it is not necessarily good and it's not necessarily bad. It is strictly based on entertaining and other activities that are not, you won't say it is good or it is bad because you won't say that, you know, making use, using of to get money, it's so much so as a bad thing. But, you know, the after effect of it, which means that if your chi and his remains have not been in agreement in you making use of that over for that particular purpose, it is now going to become a problem. Now, more, I personally look at people that use ogwo for wealth acquisition as people that are not using their God gift giving talent you have been blessed with an owl you have all these you know aspects of nature that you can use and adopt and use the mind the creative mind of owl has been bestowed on you to achieve ma the material things that you want and if you want to use configurations it to me it's you are dampening your ability you are reducing your ability what you are supposed to do the capabilities that you have you are abandoning it and substituting it for something else and that's my own personal opinion i'm not going to tell you to use or go for whatever purpose it is um it is your choice and you do what makes you happy Again, when we make mention of Ogwo, when we make mention of Ogwo, we need to look at the origin. How does Ogwo come to be? 
how is ogu created now ogu is created through the usage of roots and herbs i've not necessarily seen any ogu any charm that was configured without roots and herbs as their base uh, items that they used to co do the whole configuration because the Dibia knows that certain herbs and certain roots are used or they possess some sort of characteristics that they can use its essence in order to get a desired result. So the Dibia knows this. So predominantly, Ombu is created through the roots and the herbs. And when that has happened, it is imbued with the spiritual essence. It is imbued to the spiritual essence that we believe that it is done through the harnessing of supernatural forces through what Ndibo will refer to as Ono Atu, the psychic mouth of the Dibia. The psychic mouth of the Dibia. This is when you now see the Dibia performing, you know, performing, mixing the herbs, mixing the roots, adding uh, the hot drinks and other items that he's going to use to configure that ogre. But at the end of the day, he uses his psychic mouth or not to, to speak power and energy into that configuration. So this is a part that it's a little bit tricky and if you see where the Libya is maybe because now we, we don't really know if what makes an ogre an ogre is it just the roots or is it a combination of the roots and the spiritual elements so this is something that we in this generation we need to research and we need to experiment and to find out on our own and our, on our own terms but that's just a question to answer for another day. Now, in this segment, I'll be talking about the role of taboos and reasons why Ogu has these various taboos. Now, Ogu, I'm sorry, Unso refers to as taboos or prohibitions that accompanies the usage of Ogu. Unso are referred to as taboos or prohibitions that accompanies the usage of Ogwa. These taboos have specific rules or behaviors that must be adhered to strictly to ensure the effectiveness of the Ogwa or the charm. If these taboos are broken, it is believed that the Ogwa will lose its efficacy or could cause harm to its user. Like I said earlier, every single configuration has taboo, has unso that is guiding it. Now, when you keep to those unso, it encourages and boosts the efficacy of the organ. But when you break those taboos and rules accompanying the organ, it is going to make it to lose its efficacy and could even degenerate and begins to cause harm. Now, if it were a name, what you asked it to do, it would no longer do it. It will begin to do the opposite of your instructions or the commands that you have given it. And this is because you failed in observing the taboos and the prohibitions that are associated with the or with that particular charm or now, reasons why Ogwa has Unso. The first one is that Unso having Unso ensures the effic efficacy of the Ogwa configuration. I just said it now. The second one, it, it encourages spiritual discipline. This means here that Unso requires the user to practice some sort of discipline, which can create a focused and intentional mindset. This discipline can enhance the user's connection to the spiritual forces that are invoked in the charm. Now, what this spiritual discipline means here, because there are some charms that you, if you are menstruating or you cannot go close to that charm with any sexual energy. So you have to maintain some sort of discipline for you to be able to interact with that ogre in any time that you want to interact with it. And it gives you the discipline to understand that anytime you have, you know, you are, you have, you've done something that is against 
there and so you would not go close to that charm so it makes you to have some sort of a spiritual discipline and to a large extent this discipline could even be interacted or can even be seen in our day-to-day -day activities now this means here that if you're going to go to this oval or you have this configuration it could tell you that you're not going to be you know do not take say do not eat a certain food do not have a certain drink now it would make you not to be a kind of person that always goes out to eat food outside or to you know be a, an alcoholic so it could give you those also can be some sort of a restrictions that could even be attributed to help you in having a wholesome and a healthier life so this discipline that we're making reference to it is not just spiritual discipline but this discipline can also be intertwined with our day-to-day -day reality and the third reason here is that protection so it also serves as a protective mechanism or measure, ensuring that the user of others do not misuse the organ. Now, because we know here that there are some people who are not supposed to, you know, have anything to do with a certain kind of organ, because they can use it malignantly. So we don't make it an open source where everybody and anybody can just come and start, you know, making use of it. So it helps engaging the character words of people that are interacting with that particular ogre. So when I hear people say that an ogre does not have so they make it an open book whereby people that are not supposed to make use of it would now want to make use of it. So it becomes an aberration of culture. Now the fourth reason here is that respect for the sacred by adhering to unso, the user demonstrates respect for spiritual and cultural traditions surrounding the org. This respect is crucial in maintaining the integrity and sanctity of the org. And the fifth, uh, the fifth reason here is community and social order. Now, taboos associated with Ogu also reinforces communal norms and values. And this serves as a reminder for cultural and spiritual benefits that binds the community together. Now, we know that Onso, Ogu, Onso does not, or taboos, does not just exist in our interaction with Ogu. We have Onso Obudu, Onso Chi, Onso Ogu, moralities and taboos that exist in different aspects of our spiritual life now in a situation where in a community we've been encouraged to conserve a particular animal that we refer to as a as a as a as a spirit animal like in my community i am a psyche we do not kill snakes so i can say that we use that opportunity to conserve that species of snake the same goes to the other the other communities that have their various animal totem that they conserve so imagine a situation where you go to another community and you're being encouraged to use those sacred animals in your community to to uh, increase and boost the efficacy of an ogre or to use that animal to do an ogre what happens here is that you are defiling your own soul bodo. And by extension, you're defiling a crucial aspect of your spiritual life. You're defiling a crucial aspect of your social and communal identity. So this is why UNSO is important. It encourages communal and social order. Now, examples of UNSO that are associated with organ. It could be avoiding certain food having a certain behavioral restriction and also time-bound restrictions for some people in some organizations like Ndi Nzenozo or Ndi Dibia, they are not expected to to be outside of their house after 6 p.m. So before 6 p.m., a Dibia and an Ozo should be in his house resting. He should not be seen outside, outside of that's 6 p.m. Now, behavioral restrictions, like I said, it could your insult, the insult you're making, you're, you're keeping, 
in order to keep an ogre active could reach to some sort of maintaining an answer or a taboo that prevents you from engaging in certain degenerate activities. The same thing as avoiding certain foods. It is there to boost the efficacy of the configuration. So these are like examples. Now to to ex to elucidate more on these examples, I'm going to be making reference to to specific ogre. Now in situations where you have what in the we call ibubu, awele okite, you know specific charms that the young people nowadays use it for world manifestation. Now, these particular kinds of ongo, they come with restrictions such as preventing a pregnant woman from coming close to such configuration. That place, that place you keep or you kept that ongo, a pregnant woman is not supposed to, be, is supposed to go there. A menstruating woman is not supposed to go there. You would not go there with any sexual energy. And to some extent, some of those ongo, like Ibubu, they are not supposed to be kept on the floor. So each 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 of these up it they depend, it varies. It is not a situation of a one shoe fits all. It varies depending on the person that constructed or instituted or configured the orb, the charm for you. But I just use this example as like a general rule of thumb. And for some of these orgos, they will tell you that you should not use it to cross a large body of water because they are afraid or they, they will think that the, 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 the water energies, the water energies are going to nullify the efficacy of that shrine, of that orgo. So this now, you know, becomes example of different and varying answer that a person should keep on and main or maintain in order to maintain the efficacy of any charm that he or she has configured now it is also very important to note that these various restrictions taboos prohibitions that accompanies ogo are one of the reasons why ogo is proscribed or is seen as non-existent in our culture in our tradition this is because most times you can never really keep to these taboos of ogu. Especially the more strong the ogu is, the greater its taboo. So to avoid having issues with something that you we don't understand, something that could cause us problems in the future, our ancestors would rather not engage with ogu, except in situations of of need, not even want, of great need. Maybe in time of gross injustice, in time of hunger, in time of um, war and violence, this becomes situations where our ancestors will come together because this all will are not something that an individual embarks on. It is something that has to be communally acceptable. Everybody comes together and say, okay, we are going to do this thing and we want to use it for this purpose. And the moment that they achieve what they want to achieve with it, they destroy it. The moment they achieve what they want, they destroy it because they don't want a situation where that thing would exist and become a problem for them in the future. So our ancestors do not really accept this idea of involving yourself with all but i cannot say the same thing for you know our, our young people this is why we have an increase in young people dying we have increase in we have increase in young people dying increase in psychosis increase of, of different Ill, ailments even if we've gone to the hospitals and tried to get a solution, it, it just happens. This is because we don't know what is happening. It could be spirit-infused. It could just be something that is natural that is happening to them. But we just see it as the increase in young people searching for these organs becomes one of the reasons why these things are happening to young people. So I don't know if I'm able to... You know, teach you something today about Ogo and Nsobo and reasons why Nsobo are important and the various kinds of Nsobo.
that we can see because or we can see in in, in using these various charms so i would leave here and i'm going to jump on the next video that i want to make today and if you have any question i would like to hear from you i'm going to like to hear your comments your suggestions and if you want to reach out to me i'm going to leave my ig you can reach out to me on my instagram and we could have a conversation on this if you have anything that's troubling you and you want to have a conversation on this but i also want you to subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning about Igbo cosmology Igbo spirituality from an ancestral perspective so until next time yeah guys yeah